Good morning, everyone. Rise and shine, ready or not, let's do this. This is a ridiculously early morning webinar to get your day started off right, whether you're ready for it or not. There's a little bit of mindset, a little bit of business sense, something for your MLM, network marketing, small business, brick and mortar, online or off, to get it up and running like a well-oiled machine. Whether you're a newbie, a seasoned veteran, or somewhere in between, there's something here for you. Welcome, my name is Mina. I'm coming to you from New York City, out in the borough of Queens. I created this ridiculously early morning webinar to get myself out of my own comfort zone and to also help you do the same. Let's grow into success together. Today's webinar is comprised or made up of two different parts. There's always a mindset portion and there's always a business sense portion. For today's mindset portion, I was inspired by April Marie Tucker. She is an L5 leader in MLSP, which is an, an amazing marketing platform. And she was an ex-cocktail waitress, a single mother having to support her three kids. And the life of a cocktail waitress is very, it's very, very hard because you're carrying stuff and you're working the graveyard shift. And she knew that she wanted a better life for herself and for her kids. And that's how she discovered network marketing. And now, Five years later, she's a very successful entrepreneur. So she shared a little bit of her life and she gave some inspiration on how to work on your mindset because your mindset is something that you need to work on each and every day. Your motivation is something that you need to work on each and every day. You know, she said something that really impacted me. She said, you know, even Tony Robbins has to work on his mindset. So everyone, even the great leaders that you see out there like Brendan Bouchard, who's come out with a great motivational book, um, Tony Robbins, Robert Kiyosaki, leaders that you know and admire and you follow, they each have to work on their mindset each and every day. And there are certain keys to work on your mindset and your motivation so that you keep on going to achieve what you really need to achieve each and every single day. And I'm going to start the mindset portion with this question. Where do you see yourself in five years? And that's a question that you really need to sit down and ask yourself and really be real with yourself. Because what April said on her, her conference call is that more people spend time planning for their vacations than they plan for their retirement. Or more you know, people spend more time planning their wedding than they plan for their retirement. And a lot of people, when they retire, they don't have money. And she says, when you see you know those people in nursing homes, it's not... It's not ideal, it's not very pretty. So where do you see yourself in five years? Do you see yourself in the same situation, the same deal, the same type of life? Or do you know in your heart and your soul that there's something out there that is better for you? And you have something that you truly want to do with your life, but you don't know where to start. You don't know how to get going. Well, let me tell you this. You have to be bad before you get good. And I'll give you a little bit of an example from my own life. So in the middle of the week, I teach a history class. It's something that I do. I don't get compensated for it. I just do it. Um, my mentor asked me to do it, to just take this group of people and teach history. And history is not a strong point for me. And I teach history, but I also teach it in a language that is my second language. My second language is Spanish. I'm an American. I was born here, but I am my my culture, my my nationality is Ecuadorian and Portuguese. Uh, so Spanish is my second language, and so it is a challenge for me to take a topic that is not my strength, but and also the teaching in a language that's not is that is not my strength as well. So you can imagine that there's a lot of uh, bad before becoming good. Now, this is just an example of pushing myself out of my comfort zone. It's something that I, I do struggle with, but I take on the challenge because I know it pushes me further out of my comfort zone. So there comes a term which April had said in her conference call, you have to be bad before you can be good, which means that you have to start and move along the way and figure things out before you become a master at something. So every week I teach this class, 
and I figure something else out, and I figure something else out to just tweak it a little bit and make it a little bit better and find a way to keep the students engaged. They're all adult students. Um, and they have amazing patience with me. They're very, they're wonderful people. And, you know, I, and I try not to impose a lot of their time because they come from after work and they're tired. And so my challenge is to keep them engaged without them falling asleep. And they're not falling asleep because they're bored, they're falling asleep because they're tired. But I want to keep them awake, just get them, get as much information as possible. So I've learned to keep my teaching short and to the point and not to, um, not to, what is this thing? What is the right way to say it? Well, I've learned to keep my teaching short and to the point and to incorporate current news and events see if it correlates with the history. So that is a work in progress. But you have to be bad before you're good. And the same thing goes for your business. You're starting a new business, you are entering network marketing or MLM, or you're just doing something that's completely different from the norm, you're swimming upstream, you're also going to meet with challenges. And you're not gonna have everything figured out before you start. You just have to do it, you have to start and go and figure things out along the way. When I joined my marketing platform, MLSP, I was brand new, my first network marketing company. When I saw this platform, I realized, I said to myself, I don't understand a thing that's going on here, but I feel and I know in my heart that this thing has potential, that this thing is something that I need to latch onto and never let go. And I was right. And I keep plugging along and I keep learning along the way. And now I do my early morning webinars. And to be truthful, I also, I also have my challenges, whether I should do it, whether I should not do it, things, monkey wrenches, like I like to say, comes and gets thrown in the way. And I, there are days where I feel like I just want to go back to bed and sleep for the whole day. But no, you have to get up and just do. And, and so that is the one thing that, that I want to leave with you today is that you have to be bad before you are good. And don't worry about having to know it all before you start. Just start and figure things out along the way. Let me take a look at my notes. Um, okay. So how do you keep on going? Well, you have to find your pain. What is your why? Why are you doing these things? Why are you looking for something better? It could be for your children. It could be for your health. Maybe that your current job right now is affecting your health. And you can't be doing a lot of the physical things that you do on your job. So you need to find something else that can help you uh, focus on your health and getting better. It could be for your kids. You want your kids to go to college or you want your kids to have a better life. You want to provide for your kids things that you were not able to have when you were a kid. So there's a lot of strong whys. And you have to discover your pain. And you have to write down why you want to pursue this or like that exercise I spoke about the other day, if you want to become a diamond or if you want to hit the next rank level in your pin, you want to hit the next rank level in your company, write down why, why is it worth it? What makes it worth it? Why do you need to make more money? And you know, a lot of people that I've, when I've done my cold calling, I've asked, well, why do you want to do this? Why are you interested in a side income? Well, I want to make more money. The answer is a okay answer, but it's a strange and vague answer. You have to be more specific as to why you want to make more money. Well, I want to pay off my bills. Okay, what does paying off your bills help you do? Well, paying off the bills lifts the great uh, burden off my shoulders. I'm not stressed over where, you know, the next check is going to come from and where I'm going to get food and how am I going to pay the next bills. So that you're getting closer to your goal of paying off your bills will make me feel free. I don't have to be slave to the credit cards anymore, which means that I can focus on doing something that I want to do. Like I have the time freedom to go take a vacation or to go and take that class I've always wanted to take in pottery or jewelry making, do something that I truly want to do. So that's when you start to get more specific in things here. I also shared that one of my whys is that I want myself and my husband and my family to live a healthier lifestyle in, in that that we eat more of a plant-based diet. So that requires uh, freeing up some time and having some resources available to pursue that. 
So you always have to discover your why. Know that this is not an overnight thing. It's always a journey. Improving your mindset is a journey. Developing your business and getting to uh, having residual income and time freedom is a journey. You always have to start. You don't have to have everything else figured out before you start. You just got to start and do and figure things out along the way. Um, okay, look at this. Let me look at my notes. Okay, three things to do to work on your mindset. And this is what April Marie has spoken about, and I'm inspired as well. Keep a gratitude journal. It's good to start off your day with gratitude and say why you're 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 grateful. But it's also to, it's also great to write stuff down. So I have notebooks here. I have notebooks all over the place. I love notebooks. I love pens. Uh, so this makes this easy for me. But you can go and buy a simple notebook from your drugstore or Staples or your 99 cent store. And you can call it your gratitude journal. And just write down every day what you're grateful for. You can start your morning. Write down five things that you're grateful for. It could be something as simple as having a warm bed to sleep in and a roof over your head, food in your refrigerator, air to breathe, the ability to, to be able to walk and do even the most random things, the ability to even pee, hey, have a toilet to sit on so you can pee. And maybe that's a little bit of TMI, but I'm just trying to get, uh, it's about getting real, just to be thankful for what you have right now. So keep a gratitude journal. Write down five things that you're grateful for in the morning. And before you go to bed at night, write down five things you're grateful for that day. What happened that day that you are extremely grateful for. It's good to have a gratitude journal. It's good to be grateful because gratefulness is one step forward in developing your mindset. Okay. looking the next thing you need to do to improve your mindset is to start exercising to get some type of movement now it doesn't mean that you have to go and buy a full year at the gym and just go in cold turkey and start uh, working at the machines when you have no experience with that it could be as simple as taking a walk in the midday walking your dog um, buying a jump rope and doing some jump rope and living some of your nostalgia your childhood days of jumping rope Climbing some stairs instead of taking the elevator, uh, you know, to the floor of your job or in your building. Um, it can be simple little things that you can do to exercise. There are what I see in the morning, like in Queens, it, where in the neighborhood my mom used to live in was an Asian neighborhood. There are parks there, and you'll see you'll see the Asian people there doing their morning tai chi. They have their slow movements, but they're moving. And here where I live, out here in Queens, there are also parks here where there's also a larger group, uh, there's an Asian population, and they have a park there, and they also do their Tai Chi, and people just come randomly and they join them, and they do the exercise in the morning. So whatever form of movement you can incorporate into your life, exercise is a really good thing to do to help improve your mindset, to help reduce stress and anxiety, to get that movement going, pump blood into your brain, and get your creative juices flowing. Uh, let's see. And number three is to keep a progress journal. It's a good thing to keep a progress journal. You can, you know, keep it separate from your gratitude journal. You write down every day what you progressed on. Perhaps you learned how to create a brand new spanking funnel for your, your business. Or you learned how to create a meme or you've learned how to connect your Twitter to your YouTube channel. And these are all skills that I've learned how to do. And if you are interested in learning those skills, I'll leave my YouTube, my other YouTube channel below, or I'll also leave my Facebook fan page because I'm starting to upload trainings to my Facebook fan page. And I'll create new trainings based on that. Things like that that you know you can write in your progress journal. You spoke to 10 people today and you sent your opportunity presentation or you signed up somebody into your business. That's all considered progress. Or you've managed, instead of walking around the block, to do a little jog around the block. That's a progress. So keeping a progress journal and seeing things there in black and white is also serves as motivation for you to move forward and helps to improve your mindset. So those are three things you can do to improve your mindset. 
this is the mindset portion of this webinar. Now we're going to move into the business sense portion. And this is inspired by an article on entrepreneur.com on things that successful people do to stay calm. So I'm going to share with you seven of those things. And I will leave the link below so that you can go and read that article and see the other, I think, three more, three or four more. The first thing that successful people do to stay calm is they appreciate what they have. And we already spoke about gratitude. It's simple to be grateful. Um, be happy for the simple things in life. Be happy that, I don't know, I'm happy that I have this little clasp here to put my hair back when it's out of when it's in my face. I'm grateful for that thing. I am grateful for I'm just giving you examples of simple things to be grateful for. I'm grateful for this hand cream because it's been really cold these past couple of days in New York and my hands uh, get really dry and cracked. And I'm not going to show it to you because it's nasty, but this cream works really well in, in moisturizing and keeping them soft and not feeling so painful because of the cold. So I'm grateful for that, that hand cream, that I can have this hand cream. I'm grateful for you guys. Uh, who watch the replays or are watching me right now, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to have this platform and to share my thoughts with you on building your business uh, online or off. So it's always be grateful. That is one way successful people stay calm. The second way people successful people stay calm is to they, they avoid asking what if. You know, when there's a big project at hand and they haven't started it yet, a lot of people get in, fall into the trap of asking, what if? I have to make a series of cold calls. What if they reject me? What if they hang up on me? What if they curse me out? What if they call me a scammer? And they haven't made the phone calls yet. So instead of asking what if, just do. And deal with it along the way. Figure it out along the way. Don't ask what if, because that is just going to make you more stressed out and more anxious. Just go ahead and do. Take out what if from your vocabulary. That's the second thing people do to stay calm. The third thing is they stay positive. Building your mindset, working on your mindset, and staying positive is a work. It you know, requires work, but it is better than being negative. Uh, it's sort of exercising your positive muscle, muscle, exercising your mindset muscle. And there are many ways you can stay positive. You can look up positive quotes. You can listen to people like Les Brown, John Maxwell, Tony Robbins, they always, you can go find them on YouTube and listen to uh, a video, especially Les Brown, you know, just listen to one video of him uh, and you'll, you'll start more, you'll start being more positive. They, there are people who take like snippets of his talks and snippets of John Maxwell and snippets of Tony Robbins and they create like these little Mindset videos are like 10 minutes long and you listen to them and you're already feeling better and more positive. So successful people stay calm because they remain positive. Uh, they stay positive. Um, and that does not mean that negative thoughts don't come in your minds, but they find ways to, to, to stop the negative thoughts in their tracks and they replace it with a positive thought. So they stay positive. The fourth thing that people do to stay calm is that they just connect. We live in a society where we have smartphones and we have tablets and we have information being sent at us at breakneck speed. Sometimes it's good to disconnect. Uh, put yourself, put your phone in airplane mode in the morning and use that morning to work on yourself, work on your mindset. Um, get yourself started for the day. And when you're ready, then you can turn your phone back on or your computer back on and do what you need to do for your day. But it's good to disconnect every now and then. You're not going to die if your phone is off and you're not getting the latest tweet, your latest text or emails. They can wait. You need to focus on you first and getting you ready for the day, fired up for the day, so that you can work and deal with all the texts and the tweets and the whatever that comes your way technologically. Five, successful people remain calm by limiting their caffeine intake. Now, we all know about that dark, sinister liquid that we all love to drink with a splash of cream and sugar. It's not a bad thing, but if you overdo it, it could make you jittery and you could be, you know, 
so high strung that you're you know you fly you're stuck on the ceiling as my friend Rindalo said the other day and, and and people have to peel you off the ceiling if you over overdo it on the caffeine it could limit your ability to stay calm in situations where you need to stay calm and maintain your head you could make you more reactive than you want to be so it's good to limit your caffeine intake so that you can keep a calm head in situations where you need to keep a calm head Sixth thing that successful people do to stay calm is that they sleep. It's good to have your sleep. Even though you want to work into the night to complete a project or you really need to want to learn something for your business, if you are finding yourself falling asleep at your computer, fighting sleep, it's best to just shut down for the night and go and rest. Because when you sleep, you recharge your brain. And when you are rested and well rested, you can make better decisions you're less stressful, less anxious, you can think clearer. So sleep has its benefits. Sleep also increases your emotional intelligence and helps manage your stress levels. I'm reading my notes there. Okay, the seventh thing that successful people do to stay calm is that they, they squash negative talk. Remember I said that we have two ears and one mouth and one brain. Whatever comes out of our mouth, goes into our two ears and feeds our brain. If you are saying negative self-limiting talk, your ears are taking that in and they're feeding your brain and they're making you feel more negative. But if you are saying positive things like, I'm successful, I am creative and resourceful and productive, I'm unstoppable, and you keep saying this to yourself each and every day, you look yourself in the mirror, and you keep feeding your brain those positive things, your brain is going to give you ways to be unstoppable. Your brain is going to give you ways to be creative and resourceful and productive. So feed your brains the good stuff, the good words, the powerful words that will empower you to keep moving forward. So thanks for stopping by on this ridiculously early morning webinar. My name is Mina, coming to you from New York City out in the borough of Queens. If you enjoyed this webinar, give this video a like. Leave me a comment below on how this video has helped you. I will leave the links to what has inspired me today so that you can go and explore more and learn more and keep improving your mindset. I will be back again tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. Thanks again for stopping by. Have a wonderful Thursday. Take care. Cheers.